Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today I want to color out of another of Sun Life Drawings books. This has to be one of my absolute favorite. It is called One Color Lines and this one is of animals. The reason why I love these, it, it's probably one of their easiest coloring books out of all of them. And all you have to do is you pick out one color to color with, and it is just lines, as you can see, that are narrower in some spots and wider in the other, and it creates a picture. It's really neat to see it develop. Um, the type of medium that I'm going to use today are my favorite glitter gel pens. This one is a set of 80 by Color Technique. I believe I used this these in a previous video, and they do come, and this is why I really like them. You can buy refills, as you can see. I've used a number of refills out of here already, <laughs> but you can order refills for this uh, complete set of 80. I do also have um, a set of 50 glitter gel pens. And uh, I will link all of these products down below. The 50 set, the 80 set, and the refills. And I will also link this particular book down below. Now, your only decision you have to make is what color do you want to use? This particular case opens up and if you want to open it up completely, it opens, you know, all the way up. Um, I usually leave it like this, and then I just flip, you know, to see which, which color I want to use. Um, let's see, what should we go for? Hmm. I wonder what this bluish purple looks like. It's kind of scribble. Oh, that's a pretty blue. Maybe we will go with this color then. Typically when you do these, you do go through more than one pen. <laughs> you do need your refills. Um, so if you don't have a lot of glitter gel pens like I do, um, you might want to use another medium. You might want to use your markers um, for this because, of course, markers go much farther than a glitter gel pen does, or any gel pen. Um, you will see that uh, this is one of my favorites because if you look, here here comes the, here's the list of all the animals that are in this particular book. And I just started from the beginning of the book and I am doing each each page. I cannot talk today. So there's your lion. There was, hmm, what was that one? I think it was a lizard. Here is a camel. And you can see some of them are landscape, some of them are portrait. Here is a raven. So doesn't that look cool? I mean, it's just lines that you're coloring in, but it does make a cute picture. There is a mouse. There are some birds flying. There is, what was this, a cub, I think. So we're just going to go to the next picture, whatever that may be. I didn't really look. I just knew that I wanted to do the next picture. Now, you can either turn the book this way and color I find it easier to go the other way because these do go up to the binding a little close. And I, I kind of talked to Sun Life Drawing about that. And maybe they'll change that in the future. But that way, or this way, I have an easier time of getting to the beginning of the line when it's next to the binding over here. So I kind of start upside down and I work my way up this way. So that's what we will do today. Um, Hopefully this video will not be too long. I am, I am anticipating that we'll get this one done in one part. That it, you know, it shouldn't be much over an hour. 
who knows i never really timed myself as far as how long one of these pictures took me so um we will get at it i am going to misty don't chew on my cord she just likes them. right now she's just batting at it but i can just she's my chewer and uh, i can just see her chewing on my cord okay so let's see where are we there we are so let's get to it How is everyone today? I hope you are all doing well. And I'm going to have to shake this pen. When they're new like that, sometimes it takes a little bit for the ink to come out. I just love these because again they're just so easy so stress-free I love coloring these at night while I am watching catching up on my YouTube channels that I watch that I'm subscribed to and I am going to assume that you guys are coloring too you're not going to just sit here and watch me color in lines. <laughs> that would be as bad as, what do they say? Watching paint dry? <laughs> <laughs> I am making a number of videos today because it is Sunday and I don't have little Madison. So I like to record a number of videos on the weekend, and then I can release them during the week. So I have continued content for you guys, and you don't have to wait a whole week for me to put out another video. So I just got done with part three of the Coloring Quest color and chat. And so I hope I don't run out of things to talk about. <laughs> kind of hard to do a couple color and chats in a row. And if we do, I am going to pull out that questionnaire that I found online that... I can go ahead and answer. Some of them, like I mentioned in a previous video, some of them are just really off-the-wall questions, and there's some of them, there's just no way I can answer them. So then I'll just say, mm, no reply, no answer. Go on to the next question. I have not looked at them, so I'm not sure what they're all going to be about. But the list has over 300 questions, so I don't think we'll run out of content anytime soon. I'm a little shaky again today, so hopefully I will be staying in the lines. Can you guys see me well enough when I color from this angle, when I have the camera straight up above me? Or do you think I should put the camera off to maybe the left side a little bit? Please let me know down in the comments below if you think this angle is okay. It's kind of hard for me to tell. I do have my iPad sitting over here on my left side, so it kind of gives me an idea if I'm in frame or not, if I'm off screen when I'm coloring. And it does definitely help, but because it's kind of backwards from what I'm seeing down here when I'm coloring, it's kind of hard to judge what, I mean, I can kind of see what you're seeing, but it is kind of backwards. I don't know how to describe it. So yeah, if you could let me know whether you're seeing things okay, I would appreciate it.
when you start out, of course, these lines don't take too long to color in. And then once you get to the longer ones, you're working on a line for quite a while. That makes sense, doesn't it? But see how easy this is? And of course, marker would go even faster. Gel pen takes a little bit longer. And of course, pencil being your, what did you say, slowest medium would take the longest. All depends upon if you don't like white spaces in your when you color with colored pencil and I am definitely one of those people I would have to color pretty dark and colored pencils are just harder on the hands and the wrist and fingers and stuff than gel pens or particularly markers I think markers are probably the easiest for people that have arthritis or other problems with their you know hands their their or their fingers or even wrist problems markers would probably be the way for you to go but gel pens aren't bad either i do find sometimes my index finger though will get a little sore these uh gel pens the the type that have the cushion on the barrel definitely help not all gel pens have that um there's just one drawback to that <laughs> that that i find when i'm coloring with gel pens with this cushion grip you can't really see the level of ink that you have you know once you get down to this point until you're almost out <laughs> <laughs> so and once I see you know typically once I'm down to here I and I have quite a bit of a picture left to do I typically like to get a refill out and ready so that I don't wait until I'm completely out of ink being and then have to go search for the correct ink the right color and if I would have been smart be quiet before this video, I would have picked out my color and my and a refill to match. So if we do, and we probably will, run out of ink, I will have to go searching through the refills to find the correct one. Now these refills do have a code on the barrel, and the refills have a corresponding code on their barrels. The only problem, and this is true of any gel pen that has refills, I do believe, at least any of them that I have, um, is like this. The only problem with that code is it is just imprinted in the plastic on the barrel of the, the pen and the refill, and it can be impossible to see. You know, you really got to turn it around at the in the right light in order to be able to see what that code is. A lot of them are just G's dash, you know, 20. Some of them are GN, and I don't know if it stands for just glitter and then glitter neon. I haven't figured out what their coding system means. But they'll have that initial letter, and then they will have a number after it. And it's so you can match up the colors. But again, it's, I find that on the empty um, gel pen tube, it is easier to read than it is when you're looking at the refills that still have the ink in. You can kind of make out the code on the empty one better but again if you're in the right light and you're really torn between let's see is this one this blue match or is it this one or they kind of look the same you can kind of get an idea from looking at the code whether it says you know 18 or whether it says one or you know 
some of the numbers, of course, look so similar when it's printed so teeny, like an eight and a three, you know, or something like that, that it, it does get hard. That's why I especially like the Color It gel pens, and I have a couple sets of the glitter gel pens, and then a set of their mixed gel pens that include the glitter gel pens, the metallic, the pastel, and the neon. And there are refills for all of their glitter gel pens. Now what's really neat about theirs is on the barrel, they have a color name. I mean, they're the only company out there that has names on their on the barrel of their gel pens. And then you get a set of refills, and the refills go according to, it doesn't have the name on them, but each gel pen also has a code for that color. And the refills have this code on them too, and they're very easy to read. Not like all of these. <laughs> so the color gel pens definitely have an advantage when it comes to refilling your gel pen. It is kind of snowing out here again today. We had all that snow last week. You know, we got over a foot between the two snowstorms. Boy, I am going out of the lines today. And now we're supposed to get a couple inches, and it's, yeah, it's snowing out there now. Um, two to four inches today, which isn't the worst. But then Tuesday going into Wednesday, we're supposed to get another five to eight inches. And it, by the time I get this video up, it probably is going to be past Tuesday. I am recording a bunch here on the weekend so that I have a buildup. <laughs> I have some extras um, recorded and uploaded to YouTube that I then just have to publish throughout the week. And it works great for me. Again, it's kind of hard for me to record during the week. So this is what works for me. I try to keep, you know, putting out new content for you guys so that, you know, I don't have a set schedule of when I will have you know, new content out. I know some other colorists, they, you know, they have a schedule. They'll have, you know, video up, say, on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Or, you know, just Mondays and Fridays. Or, you know, something like that. Maybe a weekend one. Or if they live stream, they do typically have a schedule. And they know when others are doing their live streams and so they all have a schedule and I'm sure if you watch any of them you know that <laughs> you know Dee Dee Willingham streams at this time and and Grace you know streams at this time and so they all kind of work together so they don't overlap which is really nice you know they think of their viewers and they don't want to have to have a viewer or a subscriber, I should say, have to choose which live stream they want to watch. So I like that, and I try to catch as many of the live streams as I can, but if they're during the day, during the week, it's kind of hard for me to stay in and watch it because of having Maddie. I like to just pop in and say hi, though, and 
stay for a few minutes until Madison demands my attention, which two-year-olds never do. <laughs> keep getting off screen, uh, off screen as I go down these lines. I'm not thinking as I'm talking that, oh yeah, so as I go along I gotta keep remembering to move my book. That's one thing about this book is I gotta keep moving. I have a heater vent over here next to my desk and invariably one of the cats is laying in front of that heater vent. Right now my black kitty Midnight is laying there. And then I have one in the kitchen underneath, you know, along the floor underneath one of the bottom cabinets. And there's always one of them laying there, too. Feels so good when you walk past there on your feet. And then in the summer, if you have the air conditioning on, that feels good, too. Don't have the air on too much. Here in Wisconsin, we don't you know, needed an awful lot in there. I forgot to move the book up again. You know, we just, we don't get that awful hot that often. I mean, yeah, there are times we can get in the 90s. It's not real common, but, you know, even if you get in the upper 80s and it's muggy, yeah, then it starts getting you know, more miserable than any of you that live in the South. Definitely know that. How heat and humidity can really drag you down. So that is one time I will turn on the air conditioning, but I don't like to run it, you know, too often. Save on the electricity bill, because that, that does chew up some energy. I know you folk down in the south don't have to worry about your huge heating bills in the winter, but when it gets really hot, you guys make up for it by the big electricity bills with having to run the air conditioning all the time. So I guess it's a horse apiece and so. It's so hot down there. I can imagine you guys go from a air conditioned house to an air conditioned car to air conditioned wherever you're going. Shopping or appointments or it's kinda like us up in wintertime. You go from your heated house and you go to your car that you've been you've been warming up for 10 15 minutes so you don't freeze in the car and then you go to a heated store or you know doctor's office or what have you so we're just at opposite extremes Oh, my other fingers weren't in the way. I have a tendency of holding the paper down like this so that it doesn't bunch up on me. Especially as you get more ink on the paper, you'll kind of notice. It doesn't really curl, curl, but it um, starts to a little bit. But I do see that with colored pencil sometimes, too, or marker. I guess they kind of all affect the paper, especially on these books that have the Create Space paper, or I should say Amazon paper, it's called now. You know, these 
cheaper papers take, you know, some take different mediums better. And gel pens, you know, pretty much work on anything. Except I have found out the very, very smooth paper they do not work well on. Believe it or not, I have a couple of um, books that are actually real similar to this. They're called Spiroglyphics. And some of you may have some of these or be aware of what they are. They are um, just lines like this, but they go in a circle. And so as you color them, it, it like these, it makes a picture. Those lines are much lighter and thinner than these though. And so they are more difficult to color <laughs> than these are. Um, but that paper is so smooth. And I, I don't know if, you know, ink is different between the different brands of gel pens. Um, the first pictures I did in those books, I didn't have a problem with. And now this last one that I did, it was a while ago now, um, the gel pen that I used just did not want to lay down on that paper. And I kind of knew it was the paper because I tested the pen out on some other paper and it, it wrote fine. It laid down the color just fine. And then I'd go back and try it in that book and knew it was being difficult. So yeah, I think gel pens do not work the best on very, very smooth paper, just like pencils. Pencils do not work on, you know, the smooth paper. They need some tooth to it to uh, work properly something to grab onto that colored pencil. Now markers would probably work great on, you know, in the spiroglyphics. Probably fine liner though, because like I said, those lines are very, very thin. But if you go out of the lines, it's not a biggie because, you know, you're still gonna determine and be able to see the picture from back far. And you're going to invariably somewhat go out of the lines here and there. Cause it's just, you know, even when I, I try to make myself go slower and try to be more accurate. And then somehow I just always speed up. It just, are any of you like that where you're just you constantly feel like you're in a hurry to get a picture done. I'm great when I start out with a picture. And then when I'm, you know, a ways into it, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of done with this picture. Let's hurry up and get it done with so I can go on to my next one. If I'm doing one of my patterns where I, you know, I like figuring out, okay, my colors and I want this part of the design to be this color and then that part to be this color and it's a repeating you know pattern and you know those are my favorite I know people so many people hate the wallpaper type pictures and I am one that loves them <laughs> so once I have one portion of that picture done and I have my colors picked out and that section done and all I have to do then is repeat those colors for each additional section that is identical it uh, I still enjoy it don't get me wrong I still love it but the biggest challenge of the picture I guess is done and then you just have to you know, remember what color goes where, and, uh, you know, same with mandalas. 
mandalas are pretty much the same thing. They're just a pattern that's in a circle. <laughs> you know, essentially that's all a mandala is. And so the same people that don't like repeating patterns, you know, and geometric designs and things like that, are the same people that don't care for mandalas. And that's fine. I know there's quite a few people that love their mandalas, and I am one of them. And there are those that just do not like mandalas. And again, that is just fine. You do you. You color what you like to color. And however you want to color it. You know, nobody's saying trees got to be brown and leaves got to be green and skies got to be blue. I just love when I see somebody color um, a girl, say, in a book and they give them, you know, shades of pink hair or blue or, you know, purple even. Um, I think it's so awesome. It looks so neat. You know, it doesn't have to be brown hair or, or blonde or, you know. It can be any color you want it to be. As Dee Dee says, you are the boss of your coloring book. I just love that saying. You just do whatever you want to do. Which is very, very true. You know, in a past video, I asked you guys, what is your favorite coloring medium to use? And, you know, whether it be, I, I believe I asked, you know, if it was pencil, what kind of pencil, what brand? And if it was marker, what type of marker and gel pens, what kind of gel pens, and I totally kind of left out a whole coloring medium that I know a lot of people love to color with, and that is watercolor. Whether it be true watercolors that are in the pans, you know, the, uh, what would you call them? I'm not a watercolorist, so I, I don't know what they are actually called. You know, it's the hard little squares of of color that you watercolor with. Whether it be with a water brush or paint brush. Or there are tubes of, you know, watercolor that you can color with. Um, the few things that I do have of, I guess what you would call watercolor, is um, a couple of uh, types of watercolor pencils and one is the Der ink tents <clears throat> that didn't come out Derwent ink tents and I really like those um, like the name implies they're not um, just plain watercolor colors if that makes sense they are in India ink and so those particular pencils, once you lay it down and you apply water to it and spread that color around, it is pretty much permanent. And that is good and bad. It depends upon if you like your watercolors to blend and you would like to, you know, spread that, that color out and apply another color and have the previous color still blend out and move, then the ink tints aren't good. But if you are the one that uh, like to activate that color with water and just have it stay put and not blend in with other colors, and that's what I like about them, is they don't move. Once they are activated, they stay put. Now, 100%, no. <laughs>
because if you lay some color down, say red, for instance, because red is a very vivid color, um, and you activate it with water, and you would let that dry, and then you come back and just go over it again with water, it will, just a teeny bit, it will reactivate. So it is not 100%, but very little of it will reactivate when you put another color next to it. Now the other watercolor pencils that I have are the Faber-Castell Albert Dürer. And these I have not worked with much at all. I think maybe once. And I know some people work with the Albrecht Dürer and Inktense together because they want some intense color and hence, yes, again, the name Inktense. They are very, very vivid, bright colors. They are intense. But you know, maybe you want some part of your picture more pale, you know, say in a sky or just maybe something on their clothing or whatever. Well, then you can get out your Albert Dürer watercolor pencils and add that in. So you kind of have the best of both worlds. I guess, you know, if you use both in a picture. Oh, and I hear Bob is back. He had gone into town. He's probably going to come in here and say, are you still recording? <laughs> I was recording when he came back from his brother's and sister's house. Um, with the tax information, I was recording a, a different color in chat. <laughs> so he's probably going to be like, geez, girl. And how long have we been recording? Oh, man, this is going to be a two-parter. I thought maybe I could get this done in a little over an hour, but I guess not. So this will be two parts for this video, too. I hope you guys don't mind that, that my videos are longer than one part. That you enjoy. Um, no, I haven't. <laughs> Did I have Bella out to go potty? No, I didn't. Sorry about that. He probably doesn't know I'm recording. He's usually pretty quiet when I'm recording. <laughs> so, I think what we'll do is... You will just do half the picture and then that will be part one and then we will color the other half. Makes sense, huh? And after I am done with this part, I will have to go and do those taxes for his family. And that will tie up quite a bit of my time today. There's are very easy to do though, you know, it's just your standard, I work, I pay taxes, I might have a little bit in the bank with a little bit of interest, but, you know, that's about it. Just your standard, typical, easy forms. So, yeah, they're not hard to do at all. No real estate, no investments, no, you know, nothing like that. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty easy. Doesn't take too long to do them. Like I said, the thing that's going to take the longest this year is the fact that I don't have last year's returns on my... Are you done? Nope. Almost. 
Ah, oh, he brought lunch home. He brought tacos home. They should be done in a little bit. That sounds good. It is almost lunchtime. Are you done? No. <laughs> Like, how long are you going to be over there today? As long as it takes. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the watercolor pencils. And then, besides watercolor pencils, there are also the watercolor brush pens. And I have a number of those, too, that I have not worked a lot with. So I have the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. I have the Arteza Brush Pens. And do I have any others? I don't think so. I think it's those two. Um, I, oh no, I do have the Color It ones also that you can buy refills for, which is nice about the color. It, I mean, the color it supplies are just second to none. You, you, you know, you do get what you pay for. They're a little more pricey other than the zigs. The zigs are pricey too, but you know, typically the color it stuff, their products are a little more pricey, but you do get what you pay for. Their books are just awesome. They're printed on such heavy cardstock, you know, with hard cardboard covers and ring bound at the top. And, I mean, they're just, they're awesome books, but they are expensive. You know, they're typically $19.99 a piece unless they have one on sale, which they do periodically. They, they will put some of their books on sale here and there. And the only reason why I got the glitter gel pens and the watercolor brushes and their set of markers, because Lord knows I don't really need any of them, <laughs> but they had such a fantastic deal last December for their 12 days of Christmas. And they had this whole kit that they were selling at, I think it was like 60 or 70% off, and I just couldn't pass it up. <laughs> it was such a good deal. So yeah, so I do have those too. So there's many, many different types of watercolor mediums just on its own. And then there also, I don't have a lot of these, but there are watercolor markers. I do have some Spectrum Noir Aqua Markers is what they're called. And I have not played much with them either, so I'm not sure how well they work. I can't really do a review on them. I am thinking sometime in the future that's what I'm going to do, though. We'll get them out and we'll test them and see, you know, how they work on this cheaper paper and how they work on cardstock and versus watercolor paper. Now, naturally, they're going to work the best on watercolor paper, but I'm just curious to see if you can actually spread the watercolor ink on this cheaper Amazon paper. Something kind of tells me it's not going to work real well, but definitely better than trying to blend with alcohol markers on this paper because that just does not work. Not typically. Um, at least I haven't found a way to do it. Blending colored pencils and whatnot. Yeah, that, that can work. But, you know, and straight coloring with markers works great on this paper. And the gel pens, as you can see, works great on this paper. I love this paper for gel pens. So, you know, I hear a lot of complaints about the 
quality of this paper, and yes, it is. It is cheap paper. It's thin, it's, you know. But depending, I guess, on what coloring medium you use will determine whether you are okay with this paper or whether you absolutely hate it. If you are one that likes to blend with your alcohol markers, you're going to hate it. And you would probably have to copy it over onto cardstock or marker paper. Depending on what kind of cardstock you have. Some of my cardstock works in my printer and some of it that I bought is just too heavy. So I haven't really determined what weight, how many pound cardstock I can go up to in this particular printer. I noticed that my monochrome printer, they're both brother printers, but the mon one is monochrome, one is a color laser printer, and it seems like the monochrome printer can take a little bit heavier cardstock than the color printer, and I don't know why that is. It must be the way the paper wraps around the platen maybe inside. I'm not sure. I, I'm assuming that's the reason. Okay, I lied. I said we'll do this until it's halfway done, and then we'll finish it the second half in part two. But because it is lunchtime and my tummy is growling, especially now that I know there are tacos waiting for me, <laughs> we will probably just do a couple more lines because we are getting to some of the longer ones now. And then I am going to end this video and we will pick it up in part two. Not sure when I'll be recording that because, yeah, the rest of today is probably going to be tied up with doing taxes. And unless I come in, well, I was going to say, unless I come in tonight and finish recording it, but I think this is one type of video I will not be able to record at night because of the glittery effect of these gel pens. The lights that I have to record with in here at night would just be impossible for you guys on your end because you just wouldn't be able to see too well because like the name implies they are pretty glittery and shiny I have a hard time sitting in my chair at night and, and coloring with the glitter gel pens even because the light in there is directly overhead um, and it shines at such an angle that yeah it's sometimes difficult to see what I'm coloring because it gets so shiny so sometimes it's hard to see if I'm missing some white space or <laughs> I'll look at it the next morning I'm like ew and perfectionist that I am, I'll go back through the picture and I will fix a lot of the white spots. Because a lot of times you can't tell if you're right up to the black line or not, so there will be a lot of white left. And yeah, kind of drives me crazy. Okay, I think I lied again. We'll do one more line. See, this is just addictive. It's just so easy to do. And that's why, yeah, it's my favorite to curl up in my chair, have my iPad next to me on the end table, and play some YouTube videos. And just color away. Sometimes I'll do it in the morning before Maddie comes. Just a way to relax in the morning a little bit, trying to wake up. I am not a morning person, so it takes me a while to wake up. I am much more a night owl. I am typically up till midnight. And last night I was up till 1230, but Bella actually let me sleep in this morning. It was like quarter to seven. 
And that's really late for us. Sometimes it's as early as 5. 5, 5.30. 6 o'clock seems to be her normal awake time. Or sometimes I'm awake and I just can't fall back to sleep. So once I start moving, she wakes up. And then she sits there and stares in your face like, Okay, Mom, let's get up. Now that I'm moving, uh, I realize oh, I gotta go potty. It's kind of like us, right? Get moving and then you gotta go to the bathroom. So I get up with her and take her out. So then I'm up for the day. So yeah, it's my relaxation time in the morning and my relaxation time at night, depending upon if I have anything else going on, anything else I have to do. Today is also cleaning day, so <laughs> I'll be making my big supper with my making up pork roast with carrots and potatoes. Yeah, and got to get dishes done and vacuuming and all that fun stuff. So, let me back you back out. And it shut off on me again. Hopefully, I won't be turning you off this time. And see if that worked. Yeah, oh, there we go. Okay, so there we are. Looks kind of funky right now, doesn't it? can't really tell what it is yet and I can't I'm not sure what it is either so we only got about a third of it done rather than a half and we are at 50 almost 52 minutes so the next one the next part two is going to be over an hour yet I really didn't think this was going to take this long um so I kind of Overest or underestimated how long this one's going to take, but I hope you guys don't mind. If you don't want to see it all on camera, comment below, okay? Just so I kind of know how you guys are feeling about this. If you do want to see it all on camera as um, another color in chat, let me know that too. So, again, this is One Color Lines Animals by Sun Life Drawing, and I am using the color technique glitter gel pins which I absolutely love I will link the book both sets of glitter gel pins and the refills down below and I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give it a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed please consider doing so and hit that bell so you know when I put out another video I hope everyone has a fantastic day and as always happy coloring <music>